Okay, so let's take an example, one more example of a uh, problem in kinematics for two dimension. Uh, we already have solved a problem in which there is a guy. Well, it was me in that problem. Let's say it's me only. Uh, it's so difficult to draw a straight line for me. Okay. So there's a building, and there's a guy standing here. And we said in the last problem that this was 30 meters. And he threw the ball upward. For that problem, it was upward. But let's say this guy actually chose the ball at an angle of 60 degrees. And um, this ball, as we all know, that is going to go like this. and end, end up somewhere here right now we have to find this distance r and also we have to find time of flight how long the ball was in air alright so what do we have we have we can again assume this to be the x-axis and this to be the y-axis so v initial in the polar coordinate we all know well we haven't told how fast it was thrown let's say it was thrown at 40 meters per second so it's 40 comma 60 degrees and we can change that to Cartesian and it will be 40 cos 60 comma 40 sine 60 degree right also there is an acceleration acting which is due to gravity g and let's take this to be 10 uh, 10 meters per second square so G according to the way we have defined our y-axis is going to be 0 comma minus G or minus 10 well it's 9.8 but let's take 10 for the sake of simplicity alright so 40 cos 60 is the velocity in the y direction uh, I'm no in the x direction and it's not being acted by any acceleration 40 sine 60 is the velocity in the y direction and it's being acted by an acceleration minus 10 so first of all time of flight we can always calculate time of flight well if you recall the equation of kinematics it was um, uh, well Vf let's not put x and y's just write down the equation we already have assumed xi to be 0 and ti to be 0 so Vf equals Vi plus a t uh, a t f and uh, xf equals vit plus half a well this is all f tf squared and vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a xf right okay let's see what can we calculate uh, let's search for this equation well we can use this equation here 
um, to find the velocity vf in the y direction. Y for the y. So th let's break the problem in the x and y direction. For the x-axis, vi is 40 cos 60. A is zero. For the y direction, vi is 40 sine 60 and acceleration is minus 10 right so this does not have much information but this will be used to calculate the value of r and to, cal uh, to calculate value of r we need the time of flight but before time of flight we think we can calculate the final velocity in the y direction which means when this guy lands up here you see this velocity stays same all the time so all the time the x component the x component of the velocity will stay the same it's only the y component that changes with time because it's only the y component that is being acted by the we i have made some arrows longer here but i actually mean to say that all these arrows are same in length let me make them longer too. Yeah. Okay. So all these arrows are same in length, which means the velocity in the y x direction is constant all the time, but it is the velocity in the y direction which is changing because of this acceleration. So this the the velocity in the y direction started with this velocity, but because of acceleration it got changed. And um so, what should we do? First of all, there is more information on the y-axis. For the y-axis, we already have assumed yi to be zero. Both x and y are zero. Because it's a two-dimension problem. We assume that the origin is at the same place where I am standing. y is zero. But yf is well if you look closely it's minus 30 meters right because this is yf this is yf just talking about the y-axis the ball started here but ended up here so this is the vector this whole line vec arrow is the vector which is minus 30 meters uh, in the y direction all right so let's use this equation to find out the final velocity in the y direction. So it's going to be V Y F. Let me read write down the equation so that you do not get confused. V Y I square plus two A Y F. I'm just changing the variables. Nothing nothing more. Okay, now we want to calculate V Y V Y F velocity final in the y direction. What is Vyi? Well, Vyi is 40 sine 60, which is 40 multiplied by, well, we know sine 60 is root 3 over 2 plus 2. What is A? It's minus 10. What is Yf? Well, Yf is minus 30. And if you do this, what do you get? You get 800 into 3 plus 6 0 0 which is 3000 so V Y F is square root of 3000 okay now once you have V Y F you can use V Y F in this equation to find out the time how to do that? Well, what is Vyf? Let's read out, rewrite the same equation in terms of the variables we have been using. Equals Vif plus Atf. What is Vyf? We just calculated. It's 3000. What is Vif? Well, you see Vif is pointing in the y direction and is positive so it's 40 uh, 
40 well well let's be careful here vyf we weren't careful here if we take a square root which sign should we take plus or minus if we think closely then we should take a negative sign because right here vyf is pointing downward the final velocity in the y direction is pointing downward but we have assumed y to be in the up direction so we'll take the negative sign when we take the square root so this will be negative this will be plus plus what is going to be a a is going to be minus 10 and tf and tf turns out to be um, minus 3000 minus 40 divided by minus 10 which if you do a small calculation will be 4 plus square root of 30 okay so we have tf also how to find r now r of the range is on the x-axis and it's only because of the um, velocity in the x direction and there is no acceleration in the x direction so we can use this formula with a equal to zero so your x f is going to be v i x t f which will be v i x is this and cos 60 is one half so this is 20 multiplied by 4 plus square root of 30 right what is xf well xf is nothing but range because xf minus xi is range we already have assumed xi to be 0 so xf is range so we have the range also and we have the time of flight also right and we just we, we, we found out both of them by simply working separately in both the dimensions by breaking up the problem you can certainly understand what's going on in there you do not have to mix up the two dimension you can certainly understand how the two dimensions uh, x and y are working together to give you this kind of shape or this kind of motion but we do not really have to complicate things by mixing those two right that's the idea otherwise things become a little complicated so I believe any problem can be solved using this idea and keep things simple.